Hi, I'm Alex Schmidt, and United States defense spending is like the Hulk, a heroic force constantly rampaging out of control. Defense spending is important. It's also emotional. So emotional, it bombards our politicians like gamma rays, turning those Ivy League friendliness bots into rage monsters, turning their brains off and flipping rhetorical cars at each other. Just look at this debate from 2012. Our Air Force is older and smaller than any time since it was founded in 1947. Our Navy is smaller now than any time since 1917. That's right, Mitt Romney's take on defense spending was to say Barack Obama, a man who receives daily intelligence briefings, straight up forgot we need planes and boats. You mentioned the Navy, for example, and that we have fewer ships than we did in 1916. Well, Governor, we also have fewer horses and bayonets. We have these things called aircraft carriers where planes land on them. We have these ships that go underwater, nuclear submarines. Yep. President Obama claimed Governor Mitt Romney, a man smart enough to organize an Olympics, goes around modern America thinking we live in musket times, as if Mitt's some kind of powdered wig and Sino man. That is not an actual debate, which is a shame. We need a practical talk about our defense budget because it's out of control, crucial to our economy, and too big to fail or protect us. <laughs> In 2016, the Defense Department had a budget of $581 billion, which is a number. And without context, that number can't mean anything. Oh, hi, context. Ah, uh, phew, okay, the calories here. So, $581 billion. The United States outspends the world's next seven or eight highest defense spenders combined. We spend three times as much as the rest of our NATO allies combined. Security-wise, America is basically teamed up with itself, projecting the world's biggest air force and biggest navy worldwide, with 10 Nimitz-class supercarriers supported by hundreds of US military bases dotting the globe. And the competition's shrinking. The world's next two biggest military spenders, China and Russia, have one one aircraft carrier apiece, far fewer bases, and are cutting their military spending, which means America can sit back, pat itself on the back, and... Our military is a disaster. Every weapon system has been gutted. He's more interested in funding Planned Parenthood than he is in funding the military. Oh, freak out all the time. Let's freak out all the time! Oh, oh phew. Thank you again, Horseword. Uh, for one thing, Planned Parenthood's 2016 federal funding totaled $524 million. And since our 2016 military budget was $581 billion, that makes our current government literally 1,000 times more interested in funding the military. But I don't mean to pick on Marky Rubes and the Frowny Bunch, except with that name I just said, obviously, nice hat. But politicians on both sides of the aisle hate current attempts to cut the defense budget. Cuts known as the sequester, which I know is a very boring name. It sounds like something medieval peasants would call a scuba diver. What it actually is, is a gradual spending cap. It was signed into law in 2011, put into effect in 2015, and totally ignored by the Pentagon's Overseas Contingency Operations Fund, a new fund with billions of extra military spending that the sequester can't limit. The Obama administration fought a veto battle to end that fund, that failed, and led to a new budget deal which lets defense spending grow if non-defense spending grows too. Since then, military spending's gone above the planned sequester limit every year, which means it's not a limit. The Pentagon killed it. They won Operation Spending Freedom, my joke name for a real Pentagon mindset. According to leaked Defense Department memos, the Pentagon plans congressional negotiations as carefully as wars. And they're that motivated because they need every dollar they can get to fill a desert with tanks. More than 2,000 of them, row upon row of M1 Abrams tanks. That report was from 2012. Those tanks the government bought weren't useful to the government's army. Yet last year's military budget bought 120 million more dollars worth of Abrams tanks. And this year, the military wants another 558 million in tank bucks, even though the military's running a permanent military equipment garage sale. They're selling off everything from body armor to armored vehicles, and their buyer is America's local law enforcement. As C. Coville pointed out for Cracked, that's how Eau Claire, Wisconsin, the ninth largest city in America, just kidding, the ninth 
five largest city in Wisconsin. That's how a tiny Cheddarwurst village like Eau Claire got a military grade armored personnel carrier. And we've known Wisconsin isn't a combat hotspot ever since it was designated a safe zone by senior US military analyst, Bill Murray. We're not going to Moscow, it's Czechoslovakia. It's like going into Wisconsin. Why is our defense spending debate only about arming soldiers? Why doesn't it include that food chain of contractors selling arms to the military who eBay them to officer friendly? Or what about the way defense spending helps determine whether you have a job? Key thing up top here, I'm not gonna argue whether defense spending improves the economy. Actual trained economists can't agree on that, and I'm a comedian in a tie. But I can say lots of parts of defense spending are domestic spending, spending that impacts your life and family and town, or at least somebody's town. Defense spending creates American manufacturing jobs, despite what you've been told about America. We used to make it in this country, build it. I don't even make the stuff here, it's so hard to get. It's when you ask what makes us the greatest country in the world, I don't know what the you're talking about. Well, guess what, you crazy fictional characters? Remember those abandoned desert tanks from before? One set of workers at one factory in Lima, Ohio, USA makes the shit out of that. And only they know how to do that. If they get laid off, we lose our tank building infrastructure and we give an American town the Rust Belt treatment. Vice News found a similar situation with the Bradley Fighting Vehicle, manufactured in York, Pennsylvania. People who build those have very specific skill sets that you don't find in the civilian market. For example, ballistic armor welding. And you have to take all of that account in order to reach the true number that you're looking at when you talk about shutting a line down. Thanks for that, Mr. Spokesman for BAE Systems. Wait, that company is called Bay Systems? Are they America's Bay? Are they, are, are they the ones catching us sleeping? Anyway, what happens in York, PA and Lima, OH happens across America every time America gives itself defense jobs. The biggest example is the biggest job, the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. Memorize that name. Also known as the F-35 Lightning II. The Air Force pitched that fighter to Congress as something Lockheed Martin would build. Lockheed is a giant defense company and Lockheed promised Congress this joint strike fighter would create 125,000 American jobs across 46 US states. So permission to build it zipped through Congress because something that sprays a fire hose of cash at 92% of US states tends to do well in the Senate vote. What else does defense spending do for your state? Well, companies like Lockheed bring in our allies' defense spending too. When an ally like Japan raises its defense budget every year for five years running, most of those dollars buy American. Defense spending also leads to accidental inventions. You might already know about NASA's indirect inventions. We can thank our boys and girls in orange and the needs of their dope ass space missions for inventing insulin pumps, water filters, better firefighting equipment, and more. But nobody talks about it when the military does that same thing. Like the US Navy researcher who laid the groundwork for modern GPS, helping you get someplace today or the military lab dedicated to improving field rations. Their research is why your grocery store has instant coffee, boxed mac and cheese, soft baked cookies, and microwavable anything. And don't forget the heroes at the Kimberly Clark Company, who tried to invent a better World War I bandage material and ended up inventing cellular cotton, the magic secret of sanitary pads and tampons. U.S. military spending improves daily life for anyone who lives in a U.S. state eats food or knows a woman, which makes it an even bigger shame that so much of our military spending goes down the drain by the trillion. The Joint Strike Fighter is the most expensive weapons system in human history. The Air Force has wanted it since 1996. Lockheed Martin started building it in 2001. Their F-35 Lightning program will run up a tab of over $1 trillion with a T across its lifetime. And that number's from after the military made major budget cuts. They cut it down to over a trillion bucks. What is this plane, a bank we're bailing out? <laughs> No, it is that basically, no! It makes sense that the Joint Strike Fighter costs money. It's supposed to be the world's most advanced combat plane and be every combat plane all at once. The Air Force wants Joint Strike Fighters to replace America's aging A-10 Warthog and its F-16s and F-15s, F-A-18s, AV-8Bs. These numbers mean nothing to you. Let's put it in Star Wars terms, okay? Imagine the Joint Strike Fighter as one spaceship with the powers of an X-Wing, Y-Wing, Star Destroyer, Slave One, every extended universe fanfic rocket, and a ship that could somehow make the end of Force Awakens interesting. If you can't imagine one spaceship doing all that, congratulations, you ought to be in charge of the Air Force. America's decision to build a magic plane caused massive cost overruns because magic 
is expensive. Another expensive thing is a Pentagon strategy called concurrency, which they made Lockheed do. Concurrency is a system where you start manufacturing planes before you're done test flying them. So when test flights indicated stuff Lockheed needed to fix in their already built planes, going back and changing that stuff cost an arm and a leg. It also made finished planes happen slower than the next Game of Thrones book. Full-scale F-35 production was supposed to start in 2012. Now they're aiming for 2019. And Air Force Lieutenant General Christopher Bogdan, who handled cutting the program's budget, says this all happened because the government screwed up their Lockheed contract's terms. Quote, in the development program, we pay Lockheed Martin whatever it costs them to do a particular task. And if they fail at that task, then we pay them to fix it and they don't lose anything. So the Pentagon gave Lockheed impossible instructions and a blank check. Lockheed spent that check over and over again till they finished a thing with wings on it. And the result is advanced. Alex said, without excitement. Every F-35 pilot will have a quote-unquote magic helmet for flying their magic plane, with gizmos like an external camera connection to show pilots what's underneath them. And the F-35's systems run on 8.6 million lines of code. It's so cutting edge, the Marine Corps wants to outfit their Joint Strike Fighters with laser weapons. When I compared that plane to Star Wars, you probably thought I was kind of kidding, but I wasn't. The F-35 is supposed to make America's pilots Luke Skywalker. As soon as we say goodbye to our dumb old planes, like the A-10 Warthog, a broken down piece of junk that keeps our ground troops safe better than any other plane, according to independent analysts. They say the Air Force hasn't thought through what'll happen when the A-10 goes away. Everybody from veteran senators to active foot soldiers beg the Air Force to keep the Warthog flying, and either way, we don't have enough F-35s to switch over to. The Pentagon planned to have 1,013 working Joint Strike Fighters this year. As of April, it had less than 20% of that. And the F-35s we've got are comically unprepared for combat. The F-35's been unable to fly in bad weather for most of its lifespan. As of 2013, this plane named the F-35 Lightning could not fly within 25 miles of lightning. This past May, test pilots found out the F-35 systems randomly shut down during about a third of attempted test flights. You know, while midair. And the Joint Strike Fighter can't fight other planes. It's too packed with too many gizmos and special abilities to do its basic job of air-to-air -air combat. Outside observers have been saying that since 2009. But Lockheed Martin rebutted those critics at the time. They pointed to U.S. Air Force analyses that said the Joint Strike Fighter was at least 400% more effective at air-to-air -air combat than any other plane on Earth. But something changed, because by 2015, Six years later, the Pentagon admitted the Joint Strike Fighter cannot dogfight, and they got all huffy about the suggestion that the Pentagon ever said it could dogfight. And nobody noticed. Did we all get amnesia between Fast and Furious's four and five? Why isn't anyone accountable for this plane not working? And why is the Air Force declaring their F-35s combat ready, even as the Marines and Navy say their F-35s need years more preparation? The answer might be big government. And unlike the big government our politicians fear, like NSA spying, free market regulation, and decent health care. Programs like the Joint Strike Fighter are big government nobody warns us about. Remember, America built this Joint Strike Fighter in 46 states. It's the product of 15 years of development, a budget bigger than most wars, and $15 million of Lockheed Martin congressional lobbying every year. Remember when U.S. banks became too big to fail? A whole system dependent on those banks kept them afloat, no matter what they wasted or stole. And the system dependent on the Joint Strike Fighter is bigger than big. Dwight D. Eisenhower called that system the military industrial complex, and he didn't hate that system. As a general, he used it to put a boot in Hitler's ass. And as a president, a few years later, he said this. Only an alert and knowledgeable citizenry can compel the proper meshing of the huge industrial and military machinery of defense with our peaceful methods and goals. So hey, Americans, find out how your country arms itself right now. Heck, this year your country's giving you a jump start. As of a few weeks ago, Congress saved the question of whether to raise defense spending for after the election. So in the meantime, let's make ourselves knowledgeable citizenry who elect governments that don't let mistakes like that happen. Because doing that is as simple as discovering the full. I, I was hoping that fun context graphic would, would come back again. Really, uh, you know, really punctuate this. Uh, show's over. Please vote.
this Saturday, I'm going to be with the crack team doing the live podcast at UCB Theater Sunset at 7 o'clock. We're going to be talking about all kinds of crazy things. It's going to be so good that we haven't even come up with a topic yet, because I've filmed this way in the past. But by the time you're watching this video, we will have a topic, and it's going to be great. And I'm going to be there.